and knows what's best for us at all times. And, and that God has told us, that God has told us his secret reason for sending Christ. A plan he decided on in mercy a long ago. And, and this was the, his purpose. When the time was right, he would gather us all together whenever we are, wherever we are, in heaven or on earth, to be with him, to, to be with Christ forever. And then he said, uh, said, now because of what Christ has done, we have become gifts that he delights in. That as part of God's plan, we were chosen from the beginning to be, uh, to be his, and all things happen just as he decided. And, and he said, God's purpose in this was that we should praise God and give glory to him for doing these mighty things for us who were the first to trust in Christ. And, and, he, and Paul goes on to say, and because of what Christ did, uh, all who heard the good news about salvation and trust in Christ were sealed by the Holy Spirit who long ago had been promised to all of us Christians. Now it says, his presence within us is God's guarantee that he really will give us all that he has promised. Now as we look at some of the things in the story, we, we look at Paul first, we look at Paul. Now Paul wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus while in prison. I don't know about you, but I expect if I was in prison, I would be thinking about doing that. I'd be thinking about if I wrote to the church, ask the church to raise money for a defense lawyer or to help me get out one way or the other. I mean, that is where I probably think I would be. Paul was so, he was so out to God. And that's the way we need to be so out to God. Paul was so, so out to God that, you know, that was on his mind, trying to see, trying to keep him going. Trying his very best to keep him going. And, uh, being in prison, not knowing how long to be there. But I would probably say, to tell the churches to send some money and help me get a defense lawyer because I'm in here because of the church folks. Yeah. And that's why Paul was in prison. Mm -hmm. And so I know that that I would, uh, looking at what how he did, how he handled this, it makes you want to think, you know. Am I doing all I can? Mm -hmm. Am I as dedicated as I ought to be? Mm -hmm. and, and you just, you just, you know, you look at Paul. Uh, how could he? He had to be so out to God to be like this. Because, yeah. like I said, I may have written a letter, but it wouldn't be the kind of letter Paul. Might. I wouldn't have written a letter to ask the chapel unless I would ask the chapel to get some money together for me for my defense lawyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pray for me, pray for me, and get some money to give. Y'all, take up a special offer, like, like you usually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the just the way I'm talking about this. I know I couldn't be like that. But when you see how I sold out Paul is, that's really where I would like to be. I don't know about you, but I would like to be sold out to Christ just like, just like Paul. You know, not saying I want to be in prison and bound, but I'm just saying I want to be sold out. Because you don't have to be locked up to be in prison. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're in prison sometimes every day. Mm -hmm. And so, and then Paul said, uh, said, 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 look at, said, look at how he, and, and you know, you look at how he addressed the church now. That church was, Paul had founded that church. And I'm sure most of them were familiar with Paul. But when Paul sent the letter, he addressed the church like in such a, 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 a legal manner, you might say. He says, uh, in a business like that, he said, um, he let them know that he was sent by God. He was God's messenger. He says, I, hey, I'm Paul, and I'm sent by God. Well, you know, that's the church he found. He would have thought he wouldn't have to do that. But he kept everything on the business friendly but business level. He let them know he was concerned about it. But he also let them know, and I'm sure there have been new converts since he's left. And he, he would let them say, uh, look, I'm Paul. I'm 
sent by God. I'm a messenger of God. I'm an apostle. Some versions say I'm an apostle of God. So that's the, you know, he, he kept it on a business level. And I really do admire that about Paul. And after the greeting, Paul said, uh, Paul assured them, he told them, said, now, y'all, the ones of y'all who, who's been loyal all this time, keep on being loyal. And the ones that ain't quite there yet, get, get on the bandwagon. Because you don't have no time to wait. And neither do we in this life. We, we are in, as they always say, the short goes now. And, and you know, and I don't care how old you are, you're still in the short term. Because every day we see young people dying just as well as old people. Amen. Middle age people. So I'm saying, no matter where you are in life, no matter your age, you're still in the short term. Because you're living in this time. And, and the sun is almost down. And then Paul was trying to tell him, Paul said, now look, y'all, you need to get this to Get this together now. He said, I don't want you to follow. He kept trying to encourage the church. Paul was found the seven churches, but they, they, the scripture said this was the only church that made it into the Bible, into the New Testament. Mm -hmm. The others that he had, they don't have a chapter uh, on, on them, but Ephesians does. And he says that, you know, after Paul greeted him, and, and Paul said, they said, You've been blessed so gracious. He says now, uh, uh, you've been blessed so gracious with faith from the foundation of the world. He said now, now you belong to God. He said, uh, he said, uh, <clears throat> the prayer, he said, and then he prays for, pray that God may grant them an even greater measure of spiritual wisdom and revelation. He wasn't sure if he'd ever get back to the sin. But he was, he was sending letters, and it, it's amazing how he had somebody would come by and visit him, and he was able to send a letter this place, that place. And you know, before Paul became, when he was Saul, he was just as bad one way as he is now. He was rough, and he would persecute the Christians. He'd go up there and drag them out, take them back there. And until he met Jesus on the Damascus Road, after that, there was a change. And the name was changed. And then he, when the, after three days, the Lord had told Ananias to go down and anoint Paul so he could see. Ananias said, uh uh, not me. They were scared to death of him. And I can understand why, because he was terrible. He was a terrible person. And so Ananias didn't want to go, but of course, you know, he did, so he mentioned to go. But I'm saying, and when, when Paul got to be a, a Christian, and the Lord made sure he worked just as hard as that as he did to persecute the Christians. Because he was tough in those days. But now Paul, is, we got these churches he started. I think there's seven of them in, that you read in Revelation. But now, the thing about it is, <clears throat> he wrote to them. He wants to encourage them. Because some of them had held on. They were still holding on. But <clears throat> he wrote to them to encourage them. And the one that was kind of Seesaw, you know, he, he wanted those to get on board. He was trying to encourage them. Now, now y'all get on board. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you ain't got no time to wait. Let, let us just get this thing going. Don't stop. Don't get discouraged. Say, I know it's going to be rough. You're going to have some tough times. But you just keep right on trying. Mm -hmm. And we have some tough times now. Mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's relationships. Sometimes it's family situation. Sometimes it could be financial situation. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's sick. But we all going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. We're going through, we don't always, you don't always see us go around whining and talking about it. But we're going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. We just don't know, you know, we, we talk to God about it, we pray about it, and, and we try to, we try to get to and leave it. But you know, if God don't fix it in the next 20 minutes, we're going to go back and get it. And mess it up more. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I'm saying that we know that we all going through stuff. Mm -hmm. We just keep right on, mm -hmm. keep moving. Mm -hmm. And that's what Paul was telling the people. He said, you know, just just keep on. Those of you that that's kind of got it together, keep going and go and encourage the ones that don't have it together. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to tell, you know, don't be wishy-washy going in and going out. 
take your stand and say it. And and that's what we have to do. Some things, I don't know about you, but in the last few years, I never thought I'd have to deal with But I dealt with it. And, and I probably ain't over yet. Because every day there's something else new. Sometimes little things, but it's just so easy to dispatch. Sometimes you go to bed and you cannot sleep. And you're not really worried sometimes, but it, it's just like something is just messing with you so you can't sleep, have a good night's sleep. Next morning, you don't get up. But I'm just saying that we have these troubling times, I'll say. And, and sometimes you just wonder which way to go. But those of us who have been walking with the Lord for a long time, we can look back and say, well, you know, I came through this. God blessed me through this. He blessed me through that. So I'm going to trust him for this. Amen. And that's all you got going. You have to get to a place in Christ where no matter how rough it is, you leave it with Christ. Right. You give it to him and then you leave it with him. That's right. And you still got to learn and grow because you got to get to a place where you don't go back and get it. That's right. But sometimes we can go back and get it. That's right. We don't mean to, but it's like, God, why it taking you so long? You know, I got a deadline, God. <laughs> and, and we've all experienced that at one point or another. Whether it's a bill needs to be done or whatever the case is, I got a deadline. When you gonna work it out? But God is saying, trust me. And that is a hard thing to do when you're going through trials. But that is something that we have to learn. Like Paul was telling these people. He told him that, hold on. And, and you know, keep the faith. And, and you see, Ephesians was written mainly for the Gentiles, encouraging them on their Christian journey. Uh, and, and it was a reminder that salvation was not just for Jewish people, but for everybody. Amen. And you see, the, the Jewish people acted like they, they always said they're God chosen. But God told them today that we all can be. He's there, not the only one that's chosen. Yeah. Well, uh, the Jewish Jewish people, you know, they always thought they were God's chosen. So they act like whatever rules they had was all right. And, and the rest of us, the Gentiles, are supposed to follow them. Mm -hmm. You aren't supposed to know anything for yourself mm -hmm. or seek anything for yourself. But like God said, in him there's neither Jew nor Gentile. Mm -hmm. Everybody is one. Mm -hmm. And see, and, and it said, it's not bound by, and, and it was a decision to remind us to us that we're not bound by location, education, mm. finance, and, and you know, who your family was and all that stuff. Uh-uh. No, that's not it. Yeah. And, and, and um, thank God it's not. We're not bound by that. Yeah. But uh, uh, any other of the social system thing, and some of us within our own self, we got classes in our own city. And, and you know, we as a people, all, all our forefathers have been through something. And so, but those, now, we got our own little classes in our own community and our churches and everything. We got our little classes. And, and, and see, and, and God, God's kingdom is open to all of them that put their trust in him. Amen. That's what I look at. So that's about the only way you can get there. If you got if there's many other ways, if I had to have a big bank account, I had to have this, I had to have that, you couldn't make it anyway. Amen. But God just said, I'm not putting my trust in you. Amen. My trust and my belief. Amen. And, and the, the, you know, and, and the Spirit sees it upon us that he talked about in the best day that, you know, it means that God already purchased us and that he guarantees to bring us to himself. And that's one more reason to praise him. Amen. And now, <laughs> believers can be hopeful and confident in the outlook about the future because God is sure to, God is going to bring this to completion what Christ has started on the cross. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, and if we're feeling down, depressed, or overlooked, 
passed over. Yeah, don't worry about it. Paul tells us that God understands us and he knows what is best for us at all times. <laughs> we are so glad that he gave all of us the same opportunity to come to him and believe in him. Amen. And that's all that's all he says we have to do. Because the thing about it is we know we all got faults. We know we all mess wrong. Amen. And you know, as I say, every every sinner has a future. Mm -hmm. Every saint has a past. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get where we were just because we think we're somebody. Oh uh, no, 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 no. We gotta remember when you look back and see where you came from. You know, it's not about scary sometimes that you look back and see how the Lord has brought you through some stuff that could have really took you out of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some people, it did take out. Mm -hmm. But he, you know, he left you and he left us for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look around this church right now, those of us who've been here for a while, we don't see none of the older people anymore. Mm -hmm. They are going on. And I'm, some of them may be out to get home, but I'm saying, yeah. they're going on. But now, God left us here for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't think he left us here just to, <coughs> just to, so we have a certain number of people. Mm -hmm. He left us here for work. Yeah. Amen. We got some work to do. Amen. And I don't know about you, but when Jesus called me home, I want to be working. Amen. Because you just, you know, like I said, they Nobody hollered you know from the old days. And so we look around, we don't see this, we don't see that. But you wonder, you say, well, God had a reason for keeping me here. He didn't keep me here just so I could have a long life. Not really. He kept me here so I could do some work for him. Yeah, that's right. And I have to take advantage, or we have to take advantage of all this time, this little time that we have left. So um, when we look at that, you know, Ephesians is, is the book of Ephesians kind of tells us how we look from God's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Say if we're children of God, we look great to him, even when we are feeling down. We are his children, and you know, and, and, and that's great. That's great. But he ain't expecting us, we got some responsibility. Mm -hmm. He said, I chose you. But but now I didn't choose you to set up in the showcase. I chose you to do some work. And he has a way of choosing what he wants to. And, and look how he did Moses. Moses went through all that stuff to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then Moses, when he got to the promised land, all right, Moses, you finished now. Joshua took over. So we don't know who God is going to choose for what. Amen. And he may have already chosen us to do something. We just don't know it. And, you know, being chosen for anything is a, you know, it's a big deal to many people who've always been overlooked, who've always been cast aside, who always say, uh, uh, no, we, are, we, don't, we don't overlook that, we get the next one. And, and it, you know, it, but when you were chosen, being chosen, it, it's just great. You being chosen by God, that lifts you up. When you know, that, as the lesson says, we're chosen. God chose us. Well, that ought to lift us up. Make us feel good. And give us some, you know, make us feel like somebody. And, and uh, give us some self-assurance and some confidence. And so, we, we think about the fact that, so what if man passed me over? That's all right. So what if I'm rejected? What if I'm, I'm overlooked? Like we did sometimes when we were going to school. It depends on who the folks were. Sometimes they had a very behind the teacher treatment. If you came from a certain family that brought the teacher food or something like that, mm -hmm. and, and they treated you different. Yes, but some of us, you know, we had a hard time. Yes, ma'am. We didn't come from the right family, mm -hmm. according to them. But here, God says, all of you belong to me. Mm -hmm. And see, we remember, God chose us. And that saves it all. Mm -hmm. uh, but any comment? Yes, ma'am. I was thinking about, you know, when Paul was doing the wrong thing and being God on the right path, that we 
then he said, I forget what you said that man was named while ago. What about was telling him what to tell Paul and he was scared to go and tell Paul. But see, the man didn't realize God ain't going to see you nowhere and do anything lest he be with you. He'll never leave you or even forsake you. He's going to take care of him because he was telling him what to do. Paul had been so bad that God was afraid of him. And Ananias didn't, not that he couldn't quite believe that he had changed. Yeah. You know, sometimes people come in church and they, they, they join the church, and sometimes people say, oh, they don't get in here one time, they get it back again. Yeah. And, and sometimes they don't believe that the person can change. Right. So, Ananias kind of felt like that. And then he was afraid of Paul because Paul was so dangerous. But see, God ain't going to let, let go home. When he sent you somewhere, he's not going to let home come to you. That's right. Because just like David and uh, some of the others, he'll let you go through a whole lot and still keep it. Because he has, he has a plan for you. Are there any more comments? Yes, ma'am. I thank God for you. And I thank God for giving you that awesome lesson that you have taught us this morning. I thank you for uh, letting me you know I still consider myself a sinner, but that I have a future and I'm working with the Lord. That's right. I thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good thing. We all are trying, you know, all all of us, uh, we're struggling, yes. but we're trying to persevere. Yes, ma'am. We're trying to keep on because if you look around and see, there ain't nothing else to help you. That's right. Amen. Mm-hmm. Everything else is material. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to help you in this world. Mm-hmm. If you don't hold to any other things in hand, I mean, you know, you may want to just keep it all in your back. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you're not going to make it. Mm-hmm. And it's obvious. Like I said, there's trouble times that we live in. Mm-hmm. There's trouble outside. There's trouble out. And there's trouble within. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm the hardest enemy over many things. Mm-hmm. And we just pray and ask God to get you God. And like I said, if you don't fix it, we'll go back and try to take it to fix it. And then if it does fix it, that's all good. Mm-hmm. But I'm saying, and every time we have a problem, we have to remember to sit down. When I had this, that, and other happened, I gave this to God. Mm-hmm. And, I, and God fixed it. Remember how God brought you. That's what um, they used to tell us, used to tell the Israelites. He said, remember how God brought you out of Egypt. Mm-hmm. And, and we can remember how God brought us out of Egypt. Even so, out of Egypt, mm-hmm. and, and you got to you, you think about what well, he brought me through that. I know he can bring me through this, yeah, okay. and, and you have to you have to remember that. So, well, he brought me out. Mm-hmm. Now he said he wouldn't leave me and he wouldn't forsake me. So therefore, all I got to do is give this to him. He gonna bring me out of this. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it, sometimes God bring you through it, and sometimes you know sometimes God make you get rid of the problem. But sometimes he just walk with you through it. Because that's where your strength comes from. Mm-hmm. And then he fix it so you'll be able to understand uh-huh. and see where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thank you for this. Yeah, I do too. But I, most of all, I think I'm so grateful because he doesn't have a private line of, I can do anything. Amen. <laughs> Because so many times, you know, if you call me and I'm on the phone, my line goes busy. Mm-hmm. It goes for there. No, God don't send my calls for me. Yeah. No, he sends my call. He answered right at the moment. Mm-hmm. Now, he may not fix the problem at that time, but he answered the call right when I called. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad of that. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to email him. You don't have to text him. Yes, yes. And he's always call him up and tell him what you want. That's it. <laughs> and he'll always fix it, but it's gonna be on his time and not on our on his time and in his way. Yes. That's right. And I don't, when sometimes we call him, we already have told him what we want him to do, how we want him to do it, and how soon we want him to do it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes he kick all that out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes God, like I said, he walks us through certain things so we can learn from. Amen. Yes, sir. Believe me, the more you 
just stay here on planet Earth, the more you start to learn about it. I didn't know you. I didn't know nothing that I thought I knew. I said, Lord, I thought I had gone to a point to a point C or D. I need to go back to A. Start with the basics. And sometimes you got to review. Are there any other comments? Yeah. If not, this concludes our prayer meeting for the day. Amen. We, we, we thank you all for such a meeting. At this time, we'll have a a remark from the crowd. I learned whatever you have, turn it over to God and don't go back to people with a big thing to do. Mm -hmm. at, at this time, we'll have our reading by the city and secretary for the day. service uh, they did lose service about 10 minutes ago I did lose connection about 10 minutes ago but uh, it's back it's back on now the first time I don't know what happened but the last time that was the internet server Good morning. Good morning. We praise, we praise the Lord for being with us again on this first Sunday morning in November. Hey, November. We thank God for about to say October too. But we thank God for our being here. We're going to admit we are set to the credit at the Sunday school of the 
the Sunday school this morning. But when I opened it, the book came up. I would like to read this scripture from Psalm 34. It says, and I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. That what we come in this morning, that we come to magnify his name. Mm -hmm. We live for his name this morning. Read this one, I declare our devotions, uh, our devotion service is here open that you may have a song, a prayer, whatever, uh, uh, lay on your Lord, lay on your heart this week this morning. But let us lift the Lord's name in together. We come to pray this morning, we come to live for his holy name. It don't take a whole lot, you all it takes just somebody mm -hmm. to lift his name. If I put the two or three gifts together, then it would be the me. And I believe in two we give him praises this morning, and he will be the third one. To God. And so we come this morning to the back of the Holy Spirit. As I can say, we pray him. And while I'm talking, I thank the Lord for everything, all the things that he's done for me. I'm grateful. I'm Amen. thankful. And yes, there may be times that things are not going my way. There are times that don't feel good. There are times I don't have the man that I want to have. But guess what? The Lord has still left me. Amen. And I just give him all the praise. And I give him all the glory. The, uh, I was sitting back this morning. I got this week that on November 10th, just a couple of days away, I've been sick. I've been a will same way you want to call it. But guess what? During the whole prayer, you must. Lord, still get me. And still bless me. And I just give him the praise and give him the glory for the strength that he has given me. Even for the willingness that he has given me to talk to other people that are going through the same thing. I thank God for that part of the Sunday school that the morning. I didn't choose him. He chose me. And when he chose me, he didn't say everything going to be perfect. But he also said, I give you the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I was born, that was just there. But I had to accept him first. Be a part of their doctrine. But through it all, he is still blessed. Amen. So you have a song. You have a praise. Whatever the Lord lay on your heart this morning, Amen. give it to the Lord. Let the Lord give him a praise this morning. Amen. 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 Somebody have a song for me? If I found, I could be nothing. If I found, I could fail. Without doubt, my life would be nothing. Like a ship without a sail. Without God, my life would be nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God, my life would be nothing. Like a ship without a Alone, I pray. In the water, he 
be somewhere else. Truth be true that I thank the Lord for my being with us this morning. I pay honors to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Pastor Lewis, to each and every one. For waking me up this morning to see another new another new day. Because I realized it, it was God that woke me up. And it was God that his grace and mercy that kept us here. And I just thank him for it. I couldn't even say another word. I just tell the Lord thank you. Thank you Lord. Because he had done so much for me in my life. Like I said, I had fair short. But through it all, I will still go back to God and ask yeah. Him to forgive me. Yeah. And He will forgive me for yeah. any sin I have committed. Yeah. But I just ask you, continue praying for me that I will be stronger in the Lord and I will do what the Lord will have me to do. Amen. 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 And, and let me say it this morning you don't have to be in the sanctuary this morning and just give God praise. And, uh, you did all free comfort calls. If you have a prayer, you have a song, it's open to you too. Amen. 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 I'm back here, Lord. I'm back here. I'm back here, Lord. I'm back here. I'm back here, Lord. I'm back here.
a certain way for us. So, uh, he, did, he did me good. I, 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 I think about yesterday. We had a great service yesterday. Oh, it was, oh, it was time to go. And I was thinking, it's been great, but I think that's one of the things that said behind the front only a whole arm of God. Yeah. Yeah. Not just so much the whole arm of God. And when we have on the whole arm of God, thanks to our own this journey, yeah. you know what we got, we can praise Lord. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Because I don't want Satan to throw at us. He can bounce off. He sure yeah. can. Yeah. Yeah. We got to gird up. We know that the Lord is on our side. Yeah. It's a love praise for us. The love is up at his holy name. Yeah. I said, but God is good. Amen. 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 There'll be someone else. Good to see you back tonight. Bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
and I will rejoice. You know, there, there was one time I had waited for somebody to say anything. If I waited for somebody to say something, I would never say nothing. Anything <laughs> else, sometimes you can get me comfortable getting me to shut up. <laughs> but I will rejoice yeah. in this day. Man, I will man. be with And somehow I had learned, I don't care how bad things may be. I tell my children, look at, look at the positive man, for man. us. And then when I said to Christian, because I didn't come up and made something, I didn't think I'm going to try to get the other. And I said, look on the positive side. You woke up this morning. That was good and I read that would be positive. Yeah. Yeah. You make me lay down sitting and feel good like that when you still woke up this morning and God gave you a brand new day, a day of new grace. Yes, he did. Yeah. I will rejoice. And nobody else don't want to say nothing. If I keep saying, I'm still going to rejoice. I'm still going to rejoice. I don't know you. I had got broken. Didn't know how I was gonna get through the day. No man at all, but I still can rejoice. Amen. Cause I know somebody got something to get to me. I hope. Well, I pray. I'm still gonna rejoice. Cause it's not the end. I tell people all the time, I don't care what they're going through. It's not the end of the world. Rejoice. Amen. Thank you. I had your man that walked around the head down. Lift up your head. What you're going through is a whole lot of work for somebody else. I tell some people that had lost people. Nobody would say that. I told y'all you come tell me sure that nobody would. Uh, uh, well, some people act like uh, I, I know. I know if I got some online, they might get mad, but they act like they don't want to lost somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The day you came into the world was the day you saw it down. Way from that first day yeah. and to this, this morning and Sunday morning, Sunday, you're still blessed. Yeah. Yeah. We got to start looking at the glass half empty and start looking at being half full. Because if it's half empty, if you look at half full, you can put some more in your hands up. You keep blessing, you keep blessing, you keep blessing. Yeah. I will rejoice in this day. I will rejoice. Amen. I will, I don't know about you. I will rejoice. Amen. Even sometimes when a, a, a day don't be go, going my way, I still rejoice. Amen. If I go somewhere and don't like being there, I'll go home and want to preach. But I'm going to still rejoice. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And you're here. Yes. Not because you want to be. Oh, yes, I did. Think you may have got that more. I don't want to be in church. No, no, not how you want to be. Because God, grace yeah. and mercy let you be in there. situation that door. 
Love this God. But early this morning, the Lord shook you this morning. Yeah. Somebody yeah. ought to just say, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, you've been good to me. Can't vote today, you can't vote tomorrow, 
But please, if you have not voted, please vote Tuesday. Cash your vote. I heard somebody say last night that uh, that this point they don't care who wins. They just want these polit political commercials and the, the advertisers, the mailings to stop. Well, uh, I concur with them. I will be glad to see the commercials stop, and I will be glad to see those uh, mailings to stop coming in my mail. But I, I do, I am concerned about who's elected. I'm not going to say I don't care who's elected because I cast my vote because I care. And if you cast your vote, if you care, you cast your vote. Amen? Amen. So we thank God for for, for that. Um, we, we're just delighted to have you here with us this day. And I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going I'm to ask, uh, um, ask one of the mothers if they will come and give us a welcome this morning for our 119th church anniversary. Amen. 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 Mother Dupree, Mother Johnson, Mother Lewis, somebody come and give us a greetings for our 119th church anniversary. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It is a good day. It is a good thing to be able to be in the church one more time. One more this time. is God's house. Yeah. He has allowed us through all that has been going on around us, through all of these years, however many years you've been here, he has allowed us to stay here, to come into his house one more time. One more and time. the reason that we're here is so that we can say to God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for all the blessings that you've given me, for all the healing that you've done for me, for everything that you've done for me. Lord, I just want to thank you. And I am here this day to praise God's name because he is worthy to be praised. And that's the reason that you, he allowed you to be able to drive up on this church yard, this church yard that has been here 119 years, a number that none of us will ever see. It's very, I don't know if it's like this lived 119 years, but I tell you one thing, them years that I'm going live, which is over 60, I thank God that he has left me here. I thank God for however many years that, that you have been here, that he allowed you on this particular day to come to Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church to help us celebrate God, to help us praise God, to help us worship God. So on behalf of our pastor, um, Malcolm Lewis, the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family, we thank you for coming and we welcome you into our doors. Thank you, thank you, Mother Johnson, for that this morning. And now as we prepare for our uh, service today, we ask that you would just get ready and join in. Now, now, you may listen to my voice this morning. My voice is a little weak likewise, but I praise God for all that he has blessed us with. Because it could have been the other way. God has brought us through so many trials and tribulations, ups and downs. But he has blessed us. And I'm thankful for that. I'm just thankful for all that God has done. The choir is, is in place. They are ready to, to sing the songs of Zion. Let us rise to our feet as we shall hear from the choir. For this is the day which the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, choir. Thank you. 
ask you, dear Lord, just to stop by. Father, we thank you for knowing we are already here, dear Lord. So, Father, just bless this choir. Bless, dear Lord, every prayer, bless every scripture, and bless God tonight, dear Lord, as you shall bring a mighty word this morning. Father, that when we depart from this sanctuary, we will say it was good to have been in the house of the Lord one more time. This is your upper service prayer, and we say the mighty
very protective to you the whole armor of God, that you might be able to stand in the evil day and help him do all to stand. Stand therefore, have your lamb girded about with truth, and have on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shone for the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all things, the shield of faith, where we where we you shall be able to trench all the fairy dark of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. And read Ephesians 6 chapter, verse 10, verse 17, may be sufficient for us to serve Amen. 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 Again, I'd like to say good morning to each and every morning. morning. Truly, it's a blessing to stand before you. Let, let us go in a word of prayer. Most wise, eternal God, mm -hmm. we come before you and know that um, we know how yes, it is. We come, oh God, thanking you for last night's rest. Thank you, O oh Father God, for waking us up this morning to see another beautiful day. Yes. Father God, we realize that there was those that didn't even wake up this morning. Mm -hmm. But God, it was your grace and mercy allowed, allowed us to get up. Mm -hmm. But Father God, to come to your house one more time. Mm -hmm. yes. For that, oh Father, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank, thank you. Lord. Thank we realize that, Father God, yes. we didn't have to do it. Thank you. But Lord, you love us so much yes. that you've done it for us. Yes. And God, we want to thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Father God, we can't even thank you enough. Thank you. Father God, if I could just say one word, Lord, I always tell people, I'll just tell you thank you. Thank you. Lord God, because you have been so good, so good. and so kind yes. and merciful to us all. Father God, when we didn't even see our way through, Oh, God, you have already made a way for us. Yeah. Lord, you're right there to take us through whatever we're going through. Mm -hmm. And God, we just give you the praise and glory. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, we ask you, Father God, to come in this time. Yeah. Come in, Lord. Oh, God, have your way. Yeah. Have your way. Yeah. Oh, Father God, we need a touch for yeah. you on today. Yeah. Yeah. And Father God, if we look around, we can see your work being done. Yeah. Yeah. But God, we actually you touch each and every heart and mind in yes. this place today. Yes. Oh God, when we realize that it was you that kept us here. Yes. And Father God, we, we are your tears. God, we actually you bless the woman as she bring forth the water. Yes. Oh God, we ask you to touch her in a mighty way. Lord. Yes. Oh Father God, we thank you for allowing her to be back in the house one more time. Yes. Oh God, we ask you to just keep your loving arm around her. Yes. Father God, we can pray for those that are here. Let us open our hearts yes. and our minds. Yes. Oh God, when we will receive what you have for us today. Yes. Yes. Oh God, we, we just give you the praise and the glory. Yes. God, we ask all these blessings in your son in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
this morning, we, as we celebrate 119 years, one of the foundations and earmarks of Anderson Chapel and the Baptist Church is the church covenant. And there are maybe those of you that have a similar covenant as Anderson Chapel and you would like to share it with us this morning as we shall read our church covenant. We do ask that you will stand and there should be a copy of the covenant in the seat behind you or, or in front of you. So we encourage that you will join in with us this morning as we shall read the church covenant. <coughs> Amen. By what common experience do we enter into spiritual fellowship and covenant relations with one another?
quickly when they want to unite with this branch of Zion. We ought to be thankful and delighted that the Lord has blessed us in such a manner that they have come. And we, <clears throat> I would say, say this, last night we went uh, in Goldsboro, the little church in Goldsboro, uh, the, little church, the church in Goldsboro, they did a judgment house presentation. And they say that they'll have some 4,000 people, I believe, to pass through since they have opened. They've been doing it for about three weekends. And over the course of this period, they'll have 700 confessions of faith. Amen. We took our grandchildren with us and they was doing on the seven books of Revelation. Uh, uh, seven churches uh, in Revelation and their presentation was so powerful that it just touched the hearts and minds of two of my grandchildren and another guest that we took along with Amen and it's important that churches come together and they Teach the word of God. Preach the word of God. And even if you can put together a verbalization of God's word, that will help highlight just what the word of God is all about. And they had one Roman as they was traveling through the, the books. They, our word, your acceptance or lack of acceptance of Jesus Christ leads you to hell. It's not that we are bad people that sends us to hell. I told you a few weeks ago that's the fact that we don't accept Jesus Christ that sends us to hell. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so they had a hell saying there where they was cast into the lake of fire. And many children and adults who did not know the Lord. They was terrified. But you know if you know the Lord. If you have given your life to him, you don't worry about that. Because you know that Jesus said that I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. And I'm not worried today about myself. I'm not worried because I know that I have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you know that you have accepted him as Lord and Savior, you ought to have something to shout about. Amen. 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 I was speaking to one of our spiritual mothers just yesterday, and she was talking about the way she was feeling, and she was sharing with her children that her time is winding up, and they were just, they, they didn't want to hear it. You know, we don't like talking about hell. We don't like talking about death, but death is a part of our life, and we need to understand if we are not ready. And I told her, I said, you have to understand, although you are ready, although you know where you're going, they don't want to lose their mother. They don't want to see mother pass away because they love mother. But what you need to let them know is, I'm not saying that I want the Lord to take me right now, but I'm saying if he does, I'm not worried because I have a home yeah. over there yeah. where Joseph declared that the wicked shall cease from trouble yeah. and the weary shall be in yeah. And we have two that have come one acknowledging that she accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior. And a mother come and saying she wants to unite with yeah. Sister yeah. Yeah. So we're going to ask the Sister Kishana Brown Braswell, I'm sorry, I'm looking right here, Braswell, I said Brown, Shauna Braswell, and uh, Jaden Braswell, I keep getting the, the three of them mixed up, to come forward this morning as we shall stand the right hand in fellowship to, to them.
your certificate that this certifies that Tishana Basriel has publicly professed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and has been received into full membership of Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. And this is stated the second day of October 2022 and it is signed and it's passed to now from This is your certificate and as pastor of church I extend to you the right hand of fellowship, welcoming you to Anderson Chapel with all the rights and privileges of Anderson Chapel. Most important, though, you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. That's the most important thing, to know that you have a Savior, you have a Lord, you have a God you, you can call on anytime, anywhere, any place, and you know that he's right there by your side. That's the as the trustee would say this morning in Sunday school, he doesn't send you to voicemail. He answers. He may not answer your request and what you ask for at that point in time. But one thing about it, he's always right on time. He answers your prayer. Amen. God bless you. Again, we thank God in here for you. We extend to you the right hand of fellowship. You are now a member. You have well, you been a member of Anderson Chapel. But today we extend the right hand of fellowship to you. And this church body, likewise, they're going to come. And they're just going to love on you this morning. And let you know how much they love you this morning. And they support you. And we stand as a family to encourage you this morning. So, of course, you'll just give us a little music. Deacons, mothers. Okay. Uh, the night's coming. She's coming first. Thank you. 
us today. And as we prepare, we're going to, we have Bibles that we want to present to them this morning. Uh, because my voice is like it is, and because uh, I know that Mother Dupree loves them so much, we want to ask Mother Dupree to present the Bible and the hymn to Sister uh, uh, Dana Braswell and Deacon Ray May will present the Bible and the song to the song. Amen. Ready? Oh, God, pray. 
to stay under the blood. Because the world can't do us any harm under the blood. Right? I have to say that as my granddaughter came, she was standing here all by herself. I said, I got to come down here. And this and this. So I said, I came because she was standing here by herself. So anything that you take. And see, one of the things about it, a 12 year old came to the altar. And I don't understand why somebody didn't come support the child. I don't understand that. We say that we love them. But we got to wrap our arms around them. She said she's coming, praying for school. Trusty Gunder whispered in my ear just now, say, he's standing for himself. But yes, somehow or another, the Lord touched him to say for all school children. This is serious time, church. We got to keep our children lifted up in prayer. Go with us in prayer. Eternal Father, Lord Jesus is again we come to say thank you. Father, we thank you for waking us this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you, Lord, for clothing us in our right mind. We thank you, Lord, for a reasonable portion of health and strength. We thank you, Lord, just for being God. Beside thee, there is none other. Now, Lord, as we come this morning, simmer around this altar. Father, we thank you for being so good. I thank you, Lord, for looking beyond all of my thoughts and seeing my needs. I thank you, Lord, for just touching the sick and shut in this morning. Father, we called out names this morning. Some names was not called, but Lord, you know all about it. Father God, and right now, dear Lord, Father, we say, dear Lord, a mighty prayer, dear Lord. Father, say, Lord, touch, dear Lord, touch that back, touch that mind, touch that leg. Touch that heart, touch that kidney, touch that lung, touch dear Lord, Father God, every day I lift your Lord. For oh, dear Lord, you are a healer. And Lord, we thank you this morning. Father, touch those that stand around this altar. Some standing for themselves and some standing for others right now. Father God, just touch the Lord, my granddaughter, dear Lord. Father God, she's faced with things, dear Lord, we do not even know about. But Father, she's bringing them to the altar right now, leaning and depending upon you, Lord. So Father, in the name of Jesus, dear Lord, I can't say not, dear Lord. Father God, she may stay under the blood. Or under the blood, dear Lord. <clears throat> it can't do any harm. So Lord, right now, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, dear Lord, for being in the hospital. Thank you, dear Lord, for going to the nursing home. Thank you for being in the prison. Father God, I thank you for even in this season of political, dear Lord, election, even with political unrest, Father, we will stay in the blood. We're leaning and depending upon you right now. Father, even in the midst, dear Lord, of our weak and voice, dear Lord, Father, we thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for God tonight, dear Lord, who's going to stand, dear Lord. Touch her right now, for she's staying under the blood. Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And for Father, we ask, dear Lord, Father, that, that where we are weak, fill us up. Father God, where we are torn down, Father God, fill us up. Where we are strayed away, dear Lord, Father, Bring us back in line. Dear Lord, that we may be the children that you're looking for. We you shall return. Father, we're just going to stay under the blood. We thank you, dear Lord, for the blood of Jesus Christ, who suffered and died on Calvary's cross for a poor sin for a rich life. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, what you are doing, and what you continue to do. It is in the blessed fashion's name of Jesus Christ. We say, Amen. 
As we prepared mentally, physically for today's service, and I know that my voice is weak, and I say, Lord, there are many people within the church, dear Lord, that don't have to do everything, even without us, I was here, even without, even with telling Dr. Knight that all she's going to do today is just preach, just sit, and everything else is taken care of, so I'm going to. I'm going to call on somebody right now. You, she doesn't need an introduction. You know who she is. But this is church anniversary. So we want to do just like we would if it was church anniversary. We're going to introduce and present the speaker. So I can't think of, uh, of anything better this afternoon, this morning, or this afternoon, maybe, to ask her niece Janice to come and to introduce her art this afternoon. Amen. Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Well, I came to introduce to some of you and let everybody else know that behind every great man there stands a great woman. When God made Adam, took a rib from the side and he made Eve. Amen. Well, I want to introduce to you the Eve of my uncle, Deacon James Knight. I want to introduce my aunt, Dr. Margaret Ellen Knight. Okay? Um, she is a great woman of God, and through it all, I have learned so much. I'm still learning from her. She's blessed to have two wonderful children and, and great grandchildren, and she is just a loving woman, and she will help you in any way, shape, or fashion that she can. But most of all, most of all, she is a servant of God. Amen. And she will do her utmost to bring the word to you today, Amen. feed you like you should be fed, and you ain't got to worry about nothing else. You just take it and put on your running shoes and run with it. Amen. So I'm introducing to, to people who don't know her, and I'm giving y'all a warm invitation. My aunt, Reverend Dr. Marvin. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
So it's the day when we remember Amen. or celebrate something important that happened on that day in a previous year. Mm -hmm. We celebrate our wedding anniversary. Uh, we celebrate <coughs> the day our church or institution was founded. Uh, the date when a couple was married in a previous year. But today, we focus on our church Amen. anniversary. Amen. But when we look back over the year, we see that everything hasn't always been good. Well, anniversary is not always a memory of uh, of a good time. We think back on Columbine High School. Mm -hmm. We think back on what is it? Uh, the high school, what is it? The school with the where the children were. So many children were killed. Um, then we think back on Texas. There's so many things that have happened. And so anniversaries are not always about remembering the good, but it's also about remembering how we overcome the bad, how we uh, were able to stand in the face of danger, in the face of hurt, in the face of brokenness. We stood the test of time, and we have overcome. So I'm thankful that uh, Anderson Chapel is celebrating 119 years and we're celebrating some of the hardships mm -hmm. that we've come through, some of the hard times that we've overcome. We've been able to do that through the grace of God. Amen. Amen. We were able to overcome. Amen. So with that in mind, I want to touch on the book of 2 Samuel, and I believe I will begin reading at verse 1. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag, on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag, and split Ziklag and burned it to the fire, and had taken the woman, women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city. And David, and behold, it was burned with fire, and with and their wives, their sons, and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captive. And I, I had no. I had no ham and uh, the, the Jezreelite and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved because the man for grieved for every man for his son and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And I'm going to stop right there with my reading, but I'm going to also ask you to turn to 2 Peter 1 and 6. That, that concludes our, our <coughs> study from Samuel. But I want you to go to 2 Peter, uh, 1 Peter, chapter 1. Verse 6. 
Second Peter chapter one, verse six. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Uh, second Peter, first Peter wants you to know it's only for a season that you have to bear the heaviness that falls upon you. But we're going to look at this man, David, who uh, was swift to me and at Ziklag, and who lost just as much as the men. But the men talk about stoning him. I wonder if you could tell me why you think they thought about stoning David when David went through going through just as much as they were. Is there anybody that got a thought on why they thought about stoning David? He was the leader. He was the leader. He was the leader. Anytime there's trouble in any place. In any, in, any, in any function or whatever, they're going to blame the leader. may not be his fault, but he's going to get blamed. He may be hurting just as much as they are, but the leader is going to get blamed. You know, and that's part of this part of leadership. They're going to look at you and they're going to find fault in you, and they're going to always want to put the blame on you. They, some of them wept so hard and so much, they couldn't even weep anymore. But this is just how it happened. The leader is the one that gets blamed. Now, uh, um, David was delivered from having to fight his countrymen when he was just put in another storm. David is facing one storm after another. Because he's been blessed, and Saul is afraid of David's blessing and afraid of everything that he sees God doing in David's life. Now, a lot of us would think that Saul is jealous of David, and for a little bit he is, but Saul is more worried about his son setting and David's son rising. He sees David's son rising so far above him. He sees David's son putting out his light, but his light rising and the people be wanting to follow. Uh, David aligned himself with the Philistines because he was cast out of Jerusalem. He didn't have but 600 men that traveled with him. And the, the uh, officers of, of, of the Philistines said, wait a minute, you want him to go into battle with us against the Israelites? And the people sing the song how Saul slew thousands, but David slew his ten thousand? No, he will not travel with us. We don't trust him. We feel that he may turn against us and fight with the Israelites, which was a blessing to David. He was delivered from having to go in and heal his countrymen, but then he goes home to find that his home has been burned, his wives have been taken, his men's wives have been taken, the children, the sons, and the daughters, and he's angry and he's feeling the same amount of pain as the rest of them, but he's the one they decide they want the stone. They have looked and blamed him for it. Some of them, even after David decided to go to battle, were weeping.
weeping and crying so hard, they were too weak to even help in the battle. Well, now, sick leg means wine and drunk. And that is what life is to us sometimes. It's just a winding road. One wine and one bed right after another. You, you wonder sometimes, am I ever going to come to the straight road that is promised? But it's one wine, one bed right after another. Not that you're desiring to stay on the winding road or the bend in the road. You want to get to that straight road where you know will lead you to righteousness, will lead you to home. But Jesus has promised that one day you will see it, even if it's not until you reach heaven. You will see that straight road, but for now, you got to stay on that winding road and do what face what comes mm -hmm. and make the right decision. Yes. See, David finds a curve he wasn't counting on. Mm -hmm. He and his boys make it to Ziklag to reunite with their family, only discover that the Amalekites have invaded. Mm -hmm. Amalekite means dweller in the valley. Mm -hmm. right. Each time the Amalekites are in scripture, they're an illustration of the flesh warring against the people of God. That is why God said to him, you shall war against Amalek from generation to generation. Whether it's due to our fleshly tendencies or just uh, within us uh, or external enemies that seek to pull us down, we have no idea why we continue to battle against Amalek. And right when you think, you think you have things all figured out, another generation of Amalekites will rise up and war against you. Knowing this, aren't you thankful that he who is within you is greater than any Amalekite that comes against you? Thank God Thank God that he is great. <clears throat> but the Amalekites, sometimes that's just part of your trial on this road to righteousness. Can you appreciate the position of David and his 600 followers? They returned to Ziklag, the city which had become their home, expecting to be reunited with their family. They returned to find it burned with fire and desert. David and his men were destroyed. They had lost their wives and children. As far as they knew, their loved ones had been slain. They didn't know that they were still alive. That's why some of them cried and, 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 and weakened themselves so much. Because they didn't believe they would reclaim their family. They believed they would reclaim just the dead body. Mm -hmm. Their city had been burned. Their families had been taken away. David understood why his men were grieving. His house had been burned too. Mm -hmm. His family had been carried off as well. Mm -hmm. Thus the captain of this ragtag group of renegades was feeling exactly what his men were feeling. Trouble on every side. Mm -hmm. But David, David believes he'll be okay. Mm -hmm. The captain of our salvation relates to whatever trials and difficulties we face. He was tested in the very same area. He knows what you're going through. He knows why you feel the way you feel, what you do. Because he too has felt the heat of the attack of the enemy. And that captain of our salvation is none but Jesus Christ. Right. And he felt some of the same things you're feeling and going through today. He's not one that doesn't know or understand your pain. He understands it 
very well because he endured it just like you did. Not only did David lose his house and his family, but his own men turned against him. His own men turned against him, ready to stone him. No doubt they felt that David had dropped the ball and let them down, already grieving over his own loss, yet seeing rocks in the hands of his men, he had reason to be distressed. Well, David was greatly distressed, yes. not only because he lost his loved one, but because his men spoke of stoning him. Mm -hmm. Because David was the leader, they blamed him for leaving Ziklag and going with the Philistines. Mm -hmm. David had made a blunt, mm -hmm. a great blunt. See, most of us, when we think of David, we think of that shepherd boy mm -hmm. who killed a bear. That shepherd boy who killed the lion, mm -hmm. and also the one who slew the lion. Yes. We think of him as a great defender of all. But David, sometimes he had to do the best he can yes. because he was also on the run for his life. Well, mm -hmm. He was running from place to place trying to stay ahead of Saul. So that Saul wouldn't kill him. But David had to stand his ground and hold fast to the promise that his men would trust him just one more time. Just one more time when they lift up their heads and have faith in him, knowing that he would do the best that he could to recover what was lost, and to restore them to their goodness. Yes. See, sometimes God puts us in such a spot, so we'll turn to him. Mm -hmm. He wants to make himself real to us. Amen. It was during times like these that David wrote some of the most helpful songs. Mm -hmm. When trouble comes, you can thumb your way through the song and find where David is encouraging himself in the Lord. Several times he says, the Lord is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. David found this to be true. Maybe you were fired. Maybe your household is under attack. Maybe your spouse has drifted away. Maybe kids have carried away, been carried away by the enemy. This is the story for you because there are four things I want you to see that allowed David to eventually recover all that he had lost. Then the first thing David did was encourage himself in the Lord. And that's the first thing when trouble comes that we ought to do is encourage ourselves in the Lord. Begin to sing songs and phrases that will lift up your spirit mm -hmm. that you can pull yourself together yes. mm -hmm. and go to God and talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. Because when you are all distraught, you are not prepared to talk to God. Mm -hmm. You are only prepared to weep yes. and wail. Yes. But David knew that he had weep and he had wail and that was not going to solve his problem. David knew that he had to pull himself together and he needed to talk to God about it. So he began to praise God. He began to sing songs and sing hymns to God because this was bringing himself back together where he could go and talk to God about it. So the first thing David did was encourage himself in the Lord. See, so you can be depressed, you can be discouraged, you can be despairing continually. Who are you? Why are you this way so? Why are you giving up hope in God? Give him praise. Give him thanks. When you receive news that the city has been burned down, 
the first thing you must do is encourage yourself mm -hmm. in the Lord. And this right. is what David began to do. He began to reflect and remember and to begin to talk to the Lord or audibly giving him thanks for what he has done. Yes, Lord. So that's the thing that we got to learn to do. He's just not somebody who saints for time Amen. or good. When you fall into bad times, you're you still supposed to give the Lord thanks and give him praise. So he sent for the ephod. The ephod was a portion of the high priest garments, which speaks of prayer. The garment went over the garment that the regular feast priest wore. The ephod set the high priest apart. It was the garment he wore when he went into the golden altar of prayer. It had two stones, one on each shoulder, on which were engraved the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. Six on one shoulder and six on the other. In other words, the high priest came to the altar of prayer bearing Israel on his shoulder. This is a picture of Christ our great high priest who carries us on his shoulders. Do you remember the story of the little sheep that got lost? What did the shepherd do? He put the lamb on his shoulder and brought him back. I do not know who you are or where you are, my friend, but I do know that the Lord is prepared to come and get you and put you on his shoulder and bring you back to the fold. Wherefore, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. With the ephod, the garment of prayer, David went to God for direction. He talked to his high priest, the one who was his shepherd. David appealed to his Lord. And the Lord encouraged him to go after his enemy. So now after David has uh, encouraged himself in the Lord, he has inquired of the Lord. What do you want me to do, Lord? <clears throat> the Lord answered him directly and quickly. And God will do the same for you. It doesn't take as much as you think. Satan will say, so you went to hear from the Lord that's going to require three hours of constant prayer, three days of fasting, three weeks of getting away. You only have 30 minutes. God's not going to hear you. Ten minutes. Forget about it. Three minutes. You've got to be kidding. God's not going to give you direction in a three-minute prayer. Mm -hmm. I challenged that. Ask Peter. He was on the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. He had been walking on the water. Yeah. But now he's sinking quickly. Yeah. He didn't pray for three days, well, three months, well, three hours, come or on. three minutes. Come on. He prayed three words Lord, save mm -hmm. me. And the Lord grabbed <coughs> him by the hand yeah. and pulled him out of the water. Satan will say it takes a lot more. That's not enough because you of your much speech, your long prayer. That's a heathen concept. When you pray, be simple. Just ask God for what you need. And thirdly, David now had to engage with the Lord. Following praise and prayer, we see pursuit. Many times people sit back and say, Lord, if you want good things to come my way, bring them to me. The Lord, however, says, take a step of faith and I'll be with you. Or I'll fight for you. But I want you to be engaged with me. I don't want you to be passive because I want to prepare you for eternity. To Elijah, another man who was pressed, and hold up in a cave. God says, why are you here in this cave of depression? Well, you know better than this. 
I want you to go to Syria. I want you to anoint a new king. I want you to go to Israel. Raise up a leader. I want you to find a young man named Elisha and mentor him. I have work for you to do. The Lord says the same thing to us. Why are you down in this state? Come on, you, know, you know better than that. Do you know and you'll know what to do? Having been encouraged, having been inquired, now being engaged, the story goes on. Well, come on now. Finding a servant of the Amalekite left in the wilderness to die. David said, Do you know where the Amalekites are? Can you take me to them? David gave his word that the Amalekite would be separate, would be fair. 400 seems like a number of escapees. Unless there were thousands of Amalekites killed. Because David encouraged himself in the Lord, mm -hmm. inquired of the Lord, mm -hmm. and became engaged for the Lord, mm -hmm. he was used mightily by God. Well, David right. recovered all that the Amalekites carried away. Not some, not a lot, not a good percentage, but all. Oh. That is the Lord's will for you. And his heart for me. Yes. He wants us to recover all oh. that has been ripped off by sin, yes. our flesh, and the enemy. Yes. Some of the 400 men who accompanied David into battle insisted that the 200 men who stayed behind to guard the supplies were not entitled to any of the spoil. Mm -hmm. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Mm -hmm. David inquired of the Lord. Yes. David engaged himself in the Lord. Well, Here David is inspired by God, the Lord, when he insisted that the men who guarded the supplies were as important as those on the front line. Yes. You might not be the warrior. Go ahead. You might not be the front and center. Yes. But if you're keeping the supply line, going by praying, faithfully, mm -hmm. giving financially, Serving humbly, our captain will insist yeah. that you get equal share yeah. of the reward. Yeah. That's God's yeah. economy. Yeah. The story ends gloriously. David and his men got back more than they had lost. Yeah. Enough to share with the entire nation. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall God pour into your bit foot. And that's God's heart for us as well. Right. I just want you to know yes, yes, that yes. trouble on every side. Yeah. I yes. went into respiratory arrest mm -hmm. while getting my arm fixed. Well, the man asked me in the hospital, do you have enough to take care of yourself and get to your doctor's appointment? I said, as long as my husband's up and around, Amen. I do. Well, but then two days after he took me back to my next doctor's appointment, he fell and broke his leg. Well, that was two of us trying to tend the grandchildren and do it all. Come on. That morning, my sister-in-law called me and told me she was coming to the house to be with me. I told her, I said, I told her, I said, I don't need y'all to come to the house. <clears throat> I need y'all to go to the hospital to see about James. I know he don't want to pay. Then my niece said, uh, uh, Margaret, he's already texting. Well, my sister-in-law had already developed a plan. Her daughter, one daughter was going to move in, yes. and one daughter and she were going to be coming by every day checking on her. Francine has not been home since uh, uh, James uh, uh, broke his leg. She's not been home. She's been right there by our side. Janice and Francis come every day. My two children come every day that they can. Brother Dancy has been by and brought us to. Brother Farmer has been by. Pastor Lewis has been by to pray with us. Others have been by yes. to pray 
Sister Geraldine has brought food yeah. but I can tell you this trouble on every side mm -hmm. but I'm still okay Amen, Amen. I'm still okay Grandchildren have been getting to and from school, been getting to things they need to get to. Mm -hmm. The assistance that we need is always available. So I don't worry when trouble comes Amen. because I know God Amen. is already taken Amen. care of. Amen. I've been in trouble, but God has always Amen. got me out. He has always got me out. So I just want to say to you, don't allow things to depress you. Amen. Don't allow them to get you down. Amen. Just call on the name of Jesus. Oh, and he'll begin working on your behalf. He may not show up at the door, but somebody unexpected will. So you can count on those around you and those you need. Because God works through people. Mm -hmm. And the people he works through of those who love you, yes. those yes. who are a part of your life. Yes. So I yes. thank God for everything yes. that He has done for me yes. through this trial. Yes. Amen. I was sitting there on the phone trying to figure out all these therapy appointments when my niece came and sat down right in front of me. Yes. Marker scheduled them on my days off. Mm -hmm. I handed my niece the phone mm -hmm. and said, "You schedule all that we can do." Yes. Because she knew her schedule better than I did. Yeah. And I didn't want to do anything to upset her work. Yeah. But we have been able to get back and forth to the doctor. Yeah. We have been able to get back and forth to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. All that we have needed yeah. has been available to us. Yeah. And so I just thank God. I thank God thank for my God. church family. <coughs> for my blood family. Yeah. For everybody doing whatever they can to help us along the way. It has meant so much. There will be trouble on every side. But I promise you, you will be okay. Yeah. 
not just the good, it's not just the bad. But we have to look at it all as we celebrate. Just celebrating the anniversary means that someone has survived. And it's through God's grace and mercy that he has brought us this far. Now as we come this morning for our communion, Jesus said that as often as we do this, we do show forth his death and his son till he shall come again. Now, this morning, due to my voice and a few other things, we are not, we are going to forego the reading this morning. But in foregoing the reading this morning, I want you just to pause for a second. Think of your life. Don't, don't, don't think about it. Think of your life. I think about it. What God has done. How he reached way down and picked me up. I can tell you about myself. You think about yourself. I'm going to talk about now. 
a sinner and a rich young comedian. And you know what? Even if I was the only one in the world, he died for me. Even being the only one, he died for my sin. To save me. Why? Because God's word say that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have life. The scriptures say that even when we was in sin, even in due season, when we was in our sin, God sent his son, even though we had not accepted him. That's love. Some people say, if you do this and that better for me, I'll do this and that. But God said, I sent my son. Mm -hmm. Will you accept me? Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross. As you think about your position in life, think now about what Christ did for us. Yeah. How he suffered and he Has anybody in here ever received a beating from mama or dad mm -hmm. because of something your brother or sister did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you had no fault in it. It was all because of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jesus died because of our sin. Yeah. He yeah. did nothing wrong. He took the punishment that we might live as often as we do this. We do show forth his death and his suffering and to come. You know, it didn't feel good when you got that whipping for your brother or sister. And some of us want to go back and get them for for one for us getting whipped. But look at what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. They on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. For they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. He took it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, he didn't take it like a man. He didn't take it like a woman. Mm -hmm. He took it like the son of God. Yeah. Yeah. He took it like the servant that he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today, as we come to this table, the blood, the wine, which represents the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ. The bread, which represents the body yeah. of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Jesus said of the wine, he said, I will drink no more of the fruit of the wine. Do I drink it anew with my father <coughs> in my father's house? Drink it with you, my father. He blessed the bread and he blessed the wine. We are not able to bless this bread and bless this wine as Jesus did, but we are able to ask the pay of a seat. And as we should come right now, be reminded, Paul said to the church of Corinth that it's dangerous to partake of this other world, but it's also dangerous not to partake of it. Because if you don't take partake of it, what you're saying is, I have no part of you. That's the danger of it. So we need to, Paul was just saying that we need to live our, our lives so that we are able to partake of it. Yeah, yeah. As often as we do this, yeah. we do show forth his death and his suffering. Yeah. So you should come again. Yeah. Deacon may as well lead us in prayer as he shall bless this bread and bless this wine. And as he is praying, please, please ask the Lord to forgive you of whatever that may be hindering you so that you can partake. The reality of it is, none of us are waiting. But the blood of Jesus Christ justifies us. Christ justifies us. Keep your name. Father, your name. Again, we come before your presence, Father God, to forgive you. Thank you, Lord. But Father God, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Yes. That he came to the world that he died, that he died on the cross. Mm -hmm. That we might be redeemed back to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Father God, as we come to this cup that was just overcome, mm -hmm. we ask you, Father God, to give us. We're not looking at it in 
before we partake, I have to say this. As the plate is being passed, where it has been blessed, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us eat together. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us drink together. Jesus said that I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine, shall I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. As often as you do this, you do show forth this death and his suffering till he should come again. We don't have to wait to church anniversaries. We don't have to wait to, to quarterly meetings. We don't have to wait to some other time, say. But he said, as often as you do this, you do show forth his death and his suffering till he should come again. And I'm so glad that Jesus died for my sin. I'm so glad he died for our sin. Thank God that that wasn't the end. But he rose again with all power in his hand. After they had died, they sang a hymn. And they went out into the Mount of Olives. We don't. We do not have the Mount of Olives to traverse the end, but we do have our community, and we do have a story to tell somebody. Because yes, as my grandson is excited that he has accepted Jesus yes. Christ as Lord and Savior, we are sinners saved by the grace of God. Yes. So I am redeemed, yes. brought by Christ. Yes. Jesus has changed yes. my whole life. Let us stand to our feet as the choir shall lead us in a song. Jesus. Yes. 